In this video, I want to talk about what do I need to run Power Over Ethernet, or for short, PoE. This is a question we get asked so many times. I thought it'd be great just to put a few thoughts together in this video, and we're just going to step it through in a few stages to help you understand all about it. So I guess the first question is, what is Power Over Ethernet? Power Over Ethernet is the ability to take mains power and then data from your network, your modem or your router, mix it together in a device, something like a Power Over Ethernet injector or a PoE switch, which we'll look at uh, shortly, and be able to put it output into one Ethernet cable. That Ethernet cable can now be 100 meters, up to 100 meters in length. Um, and so the versatility that we get from that has many applications. So what is the benefit of Power Over Ethernet? Well, if you buy an access point, a uh, wireless access point, and you want to mount it on the ceiling, the first thing that we have if we don't use Power Over Ethernet is you maybe need to buy a normal mains power pack, and the cable will need to be either long enough or you need to get the main socket close enough to where you need the access point. If that's going to be on the ceiling or in your office, that could pose you a few problems. By using PoE and allowing the distance of that cable to be up to 100 meters, that one Ethernet cable is all that we need to run to get both data and power to where that is. So we could run that through a ceiling void, drill a hole in the ceiling, bring that one cable down, connect our access point on the ceiling, and we've powered it and we've set data to it. Now we have things like PoE++, which allow us to push more uh, wattage down an actual Ethernet cable. So now in this scenario where we maybe don't even have any power at one portion of the property, we can run an Ethernet cable out, but we can push enough power down that Ethernet cable to maybe power a network switch, which could be connected to cameras that is actually going to give onward PoE power to, or another device um, an access point or anything like that. So now we have the ability to push the power just down a single cable to places where we would not normally be able to get mains or maybe have no ability to run a mains power cable to. So how does PoE work? Well, let's take uh, this power over ethernet injector and I'll show you the components that we need. So on this side here, we have our mains input. So we'll take our mains cable here, we're going to plug it into place, and we're going to plug this into our mains socket. This is our mains power coming into this device. Now, for many of you, you may have seen a network cable before. I've just stripped this one out so you can have a little look at it. It has four pairs in it. This has been around for, well, this is based on a Cat5e. Uh, this is actually a Cat6 uh, cable, but up until cap um, 5e, we only needed to have joined um, two of these pairs together to give us 10 or 100 megasecond. As we've moved up, we wanted to get a gig, we have needed to put at least three pairs. So generally, the orange, the green, and the brown have been used, and the blue pair, which sit in the middle, pins four and five, haven't been used. So as we move up the ratings, so we move from Cat 5e, and like I said, this is a Cat 6 cable. Um, we have an inbuilt sheath in the middle here, um, or a separator, and this separates each pair out um, so that there's less crosstalk. As we move up to something like Cat 6a, we have outside shielding that goes around this that again tries to shield some of the interference that might come from outside the length um, of this cable, because obviously the longer the run, the more interference, we're probably going to get closer to mains power cables and other bits and pieces. So for power e over ethernet to work, like we said, we put the mains power in here. We're going to use the blue pair that sit in pins four and five, and we're going to send the power that's required down that. So this power over ethernet injector has two outputs or two connectors on this side. One's our LAN, so we're going to connect our cable, our cap five and above cable in to our LAN, and this is going to go into our network. Maybe this is our router or our modem or our network switch. That's where the data is. Then we have a PoE port out. Into this, we're going to plug our another cable. Now, this cable can be up to 100 meters in length. Obviously, there are some restrictions on how much power you get down that, but generally, if you've only got an access point at the end of it, 100 meters should be fine. So what do we have? Our mains in this side are injected in here, one cable out to our network, one cable out to our device. So this is fantastic. This is the simplest way to do it if you have maybe just one or two access points. But that's how 
PoE actually physically works um, with the equipment that you need to put it into your network. Now the last section is what happens if I've maybe got four or five devices it starts to get a little bit messy. We're going to have four of these boxes, we're going to have to have four power sockets, we're going to need uh, another eight cables. It just adds one on top of the other. So the next stage that we can move to is a PoE switch. So I've got an example of a PoE switch here. This is a Ubiquiti 8 port, 8 ports of power. Now the first thing to bear in mind is this, the question we get oft often asked is can I plug non-PoE devices to this? Yes, you can. The simplest thing is a PoE device requests power. The switch doesn't push it out to it. So if the PoE device isn't requesting power, no power is sent from this switch to the device. So if you're just looking to extend your network, get a PoE switch, it gives you versatility. What does it mean? Well, we get rid of all of these because this has got mains into it on this side, and then it's obviously got data already mixed and the data plane in the back of this. And the cable that comes out here has now got the power and the data mixed together. So now if we were to take eight PoE ports or eight cables out of this, we could power eight devices, but we'd only have one mains power connection and we'd only have eight cables adverse to having eight of these boxes and eight power sockets and 16 cables. So that's the best way to do it if you've got a number of devices. It can be VoIP phones, it can be VoIP cameras, um, it can be access points, anything that draws um, uh, power over Ethernet. Um, so that's a whole range of things, like I said, cameras, access points, um, phones. As long as it draws PoE power, then a switch uh, could help you when you get to a number of devices. So hopefully that's been useful. I've just walked through really what is PoE, how does PoE work, um, and how do we implement it? We're either going to use an injector like this or we're going to use a switch if we've got a number of devices. Hopefully that's been useful. Do check out our YouTube channel. We've got loads more on what do I need to run, uh, box openings on firewalls, networking and other wireless equipment as well.